Welcome, everyone, and the class of 2026. Students, you may now be seated. Welcome, I'm Steve Dubinet, uh, the Interim Dean of the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. As a land-grant institution, the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA acknowledges the Gabrielino Tangva peoples as the traditional land caretakers of Tavanga. And now on behalf of my colleagues at the David Geffen School of Medicine, and Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science, I welcome everyone with the greatest of pleasure to our 26th White Coat Ceremony. Today is a momentous occasion for our students in their healthcare journey as we welcome them to the medical profession. And I am very pleased as we welcome them to the medical profession that I have with they have with them, their families and friends, um, and they're here to share in this very significant event with all of us. I would now like to introduce my colleague, Dr. Clarence Braddock, who's Executive Vice Dean and Vice Dean for Education at the David Geffen School of Medicine. Dr. Braddock. Thank you, Dr. Dubinet. Welcome. Now, it seems like they've just started medical school, but the last time I saw the class together was about four weeks ago, a little bit more than that. So they've been here a while. But let us welcome the class of 2026. So we're here today for the White Coat Ceremony, which is an important milestone for students entering medical school. In the presence of family, friends, faculty members, these students, soon to be physicians, are welcomed into the medical community and cloaked with their first white coat, really symbolizing their entry into this very, very honored profession. For the students, the ceremony emphasizes professional expectations and responsibilities, reinforcing the primacy of the doctor-patient relationship. Most importantly, it reminds you that physicians should care as well as cure. For families and friends of our students with us today, we hope that the ceremony deepens the special and personal connection you share with all of us at the David Geffen School of Medicine. For our faculty, this is not all the faculty, by the way. We have a lot of faculty, but these are some of our, our favorites. For the faculty, this day provides an important reminder of why we do the work that we do. There's an old adage that you can't have a school without students. You can't have a medical school without medical students. Remember that. This is one of the most important things that we do at a medical school. And this affords us the opportunity to connect with the class of 2026, enhancing our awareness of the incredible talents and diversity of this outstanding group of future physicians. For our alumni, your involvement provides a much needed link to be the beginning of medical careers of these trainees and future members of your association. And to the students, you'll note in your program a little card with some greetings from an alum, an alum of the David Geffen School of Medicine. We hope you'll find those words of wisdom uh, supportive and encouraging, and they send their best regards and wishes to you. And finally, for our patients, this ceremony reaffirms our commitment to compassion and caring. The David Geffen School of Medicine is enhanced by three unique tracks. And I'm going to pause after each one because there'll be applause. The Charles R. Drew UCLA Medical Education Program. These graduates will embark on careers uh, committed to uh, the care of the urban underserved. Prime LA. Students in the Prime LA program are committed to leadership in healthcare to, to eliminate health disparities. Medical Scientist Training Program. <laughs> the 
These students are embarked on dual careers. Physicians, they will also obtain a PhD and will become the leaders in biomedical science discoveries into the future. Leaders from each track are here to welcome the class of 20. Yeah, sure, go ahead, go ahead throw another applause line. So leaders from these tracks are here to welcome you today. And first, it's my honor to introduce Dr. Daphne Kalmas, Senior Associate Dean of Medical Student Affairs for the Charles R. Drew UCLA Medical Education Program and Assistant Dean of Student Affairs at the David Geffen School of Medicine. To offer her greetings to the class of 2026, Dr. Kalmas. Good afternoon. I bring greetings from Charles Drew University of Medicine and Science. I also bring greetings from our Dean, Dr. Deborah Prothrow Stith, and our President, Dr. David Carlisle, and our Board of Trustees. It is really, really just a great moment today to have all of you here to make sure that all of the families feel very welcomed and to make sure that the families understand how they would not be here today without all of you. We're really happy to welcome everyone. This is going to be a great day today and of um, great importance. This is a day that all of you will definitely remember for the rest of your lives. And we are just so happy to welcome you into the David Geffen School of Medicine and this wonderful medical community that's here to support all of you. So thank you and welcome. Thank you, Dr. Colmas. Now I, I would introduce Dr. Gerardo Moreno, uh, Executive Director of Prime LA and uh, Chair of our Department of Family Medicine. Dr. Moreno was unexpectedly called away and is unable to be here. He asked me to send his greetings and best wishes to the graduates, not just Prime LA, but the entire graduates. Did I say graduates? <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm very optimistic. With... Anyway, Dr. Moreno sends his best wishes and uh, also welcomes uh, the, the uh, audience today to, as well. Next, I'd like to introduce Dr. David Dawson, co-director of the Medical Scientist Training Program, who will offer his welcome remarks to the class of 2026. Hi, everyone. Uh, the UCLA Caltech Medical Scientist Training Program welcomes and congratu congratulates the class of 2026. So welcome, everyone. And a special shout out uh, to our 15 MSTP students who are part of your class. Um, they're into gl delayed gratification. They are embarking on an additional journey here of a joint doctoral degree. Um, and uh, you know this means they're going to be here a few years past 2026. Uh, but I promise you that it goes by quickly and, and that it's really worth the effort. So you're going to be engaging throughout this time in impactful uh, scholarship, making meaningful friendships, um, and mentorships along the way. You are the 39th class of our MSTP program. It's a program with a rich history of training outstanding physician scientists. Our graduates have gone on to become innovators and leaders in medicine and biomedical research, and we expect the same of you. The breadth and excellence of research uh, here at UCLA and our partner institution of Caltech really supports training in a variety of disciplines relevant to the mission, our mission of improving human health. And those disciplines really range uh, across the board from basic science to translational medicine to engineering to social sciences to health policy and beyond. So we're really creating a true ensemble cast here next to Hollywood, right? Uh, we're really honored to support you on this journey and really look forward to celebrating your accomplishments as you pursue your passions for scientific knowledge and a lifelong commitment to research and scholarship. So good luck and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dawson. Because of the focus of the white coat ceremony on professionalism, compassion, empathy, and caring, each year we choose this venue to announce and recognize the recipient of the Tao Humanism in Medicine Award. The Leonard Tao Humanism in Medicine Award is presented by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, a national organization dedicated to ensuring that compassion, respect, and empathy are at the core of all healthcare interactions. This award recognizes and honors faculty members who are exemplary 
in their compassion and sensitivity in the delivery of, pa of care to patients and their family members, as well as in their respect from their colleagues. The recipient is, is uh, nominated and selected by faculty peers. The 2022 recipient of the Leonard Town Humanism Award this year is Dr. Christina Harris. <clears throat> Dr. Harris is the Health Scientist Associate Clinical Professor of Medicine at the David Geffen School of Medicine and was a staff physician at the Greater Los Angeles Health PA Health System, Associate Program Director and Associate, Desig Associate Designated Institutional Officer for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion in graduate medical ed education here. Dr. Harris is known as a fantastic clinician and teacher who demonstrates the highest level of compassion for her patients and their families every day. She's also known for her dedication to, to her learners. As noted in one of her nomination materials, Dr. Harris is one of the most beloved faculty in our department. She is the embodiment of, humanist, of the humanistic physician, universally loved by her patients, trainees, colleagues, and staff. She's incredibly warm, kind, down-to-earth, and compassionate. She cares deeply about her patients and is a fierce patient advocate. She has boundless energy and does not shy away from challenges and has effected transformational change in our residency program, department, and school. She inspires those around her to be the best physicians they can be. I will share mixed emotions that Dr. Harris recently accepted a phenomenal position as Vice President and Chief Health Equity Officer for Cedars-Sinai. Uh, it's, it's their gain for sure. In this strategic leadership position, Dr. Harris will guide Cedar sinais ongoing efforts to promote health equity, address, address health disparities, and foster wellness across the organization and local community. We will certainly miss Dr. Harris's many, many contributions to UCLA, but we look forward to forging new relationships and partnerships with her as she takes on this important role at Cedars. So now it's my honor to present this award to Dr. Christina Harris. Dr. Harris, will you come up for a moment? Fortunately, the writing here is bigger than the writing here. So the award says, the Leonard Tao, the 2022 Leonard Tao Humanism Award, David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, is presented to Dr. Christina Harris for exemplary compassion, empathy, and respect for patients, and for excellence in the art of medicine. Give her another round of applause. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Oh. Congratulations. <clears throat> Congratulations, Dr. Harrison. You know, you can come across town and visit us anytime. <laughs> Our medical student leadership has taken a proactive role in celebrating individuals who create a respectful and nurturing learning environment for our medical students. Eight years ago, they created an award for residents, the Excellence in Teaching with Humanism Resident and Fellows Award. 57 nominations were received this year from which 10 residents were selected to receive their award. Although not all of them could be here today, we are joined by a couple of recipients. I'm going to ask them to stand, remain standing as I call your name, Dr. Lizette Garcia, second year resident in internal medicine. And Dr. Jennifer Collini, a third year resident in orthopedic surgery. The rest, are of the, uh, the rest of the recipients are listed in your program. Thank you so much. In planning our white coat ceremony, we select our keynote speaker from nationally esteemed faculty members who have been recognized for excellence in teaching, patient care, and service to the community. None could be more deserving of this honor than, than our own Associate Dean for Admissions, Dr. Jennifer Lucero. A graduate of Cal State University at Northridge, Dr. Lucero received her Master's in General Experimental Psychology with a focus on social psychology and her medical degree from Yale University School of Medicine. Her postgraduate training consisted of a double residency 
in obstetrics and gynecology and in anesthesiology from UCSF. She completed her fellowship training in obstetric anesthesiology, followed by an NIH research fellowship at UCSF. We were fortunate to recruit Dr. Lucero to our faculty in 2020 with a dual appointment in anesthesiology, where she's an associate professor, and in obstetrics and gynecology. Uh, and she also serves as a vice chair for justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion for the Department of Anesthesiology. As a woman of Mexican and Southwest indigenous descent and a first generation college graduate, Dr. Lucero works actively on recruitment, outreach, and community building within underrepresented communities in medicine. Her areas of interest within obstetrics include preeclampsia, invasive placental diseases, and health disparities within obstetrics. Her work uh, over the past two years as admissions dean has been nothing short of phenomenal, right? <laughs> so please join me in welcoming Dr. Jennifer Lucero. Welcome. All right. We're here today to mark this accomplishment and your future as a physician with the symbol of a physician, the white coat. Symbols are part of many cultures. They're used to convey stories and preserve culture and tradition. We're here to mark this transformational journey with the symbol of the white coat. I want to congratulate you your families, and your loved ones on achieving this milestone. All of us here carry a similar thread, resilience and per perseverance. I want to take a moment to share with you a story of symbolism and how it took me on a journey of where I am today, and hopefully I will impart a few lessons that I learned along the way. One of the challenges I had in realizing my dream of becoming a physician was not seeing anyone like me, who came from where I came. So the first two lessons I have are never underestimate yourself and inspire others to dream. I'm a native of Los Angeles who never thought I would stand here in Rice Hall at this erudite institution. My family came from the Southwest. My father was the third oldest of 15 children and 12 that lived past childhood. They came to Los Angeles for work and hoped for something better. They lived in South Los Angeles, where many of my family still live today. My father was brilliant and wanted so much more for himself and his family. For all you statisticians in the audience, I am the regression to the mean. At the age of 14, he needed to quit school, not because he was struggling, rather because he needed to help support his family working as a cook in various diners across Los Angeles. And at the age of 17, he decided that military might give him a chance for something more. He thought maybe he would be a cook on a Navy ship, but it turned out they asked him to be a medic. He went to medic training, and that's where he decided that being a doctor was his dream. Supplied with a small medic bag, he was sent to Vietnam during the Vietnam War. One of the most challenging times in Quezon during the Tet Offensive. Once he returned, and after what he experienced, he was a changed person. But he continued to carry the dream of college and being a doctor, and he brought back his medic bag. This was a dream he was never able to realize for himself, but a dream I began to have, and at the age of seven, I proclaimed to him, I would grow up and I would be a doctor. That medic bag became a symbol of medicine for me. As a kid, I looked at it many times, opened it, and imagined the many people he cared for with the limited equipment in that small bag. This leads me to my next lesson. Believe in yourself, even when it seems the system does not always appear to believe in you. In ninth grade, the same time my father had to leave school, I struggled with algebra, and I was told by the school, the teacher, the system, you're bad at math, and you cannot be a doctor if you cannot do well in math. I let the system tell me no, but I never stopped staring at that medic bag. I pivoted, I decided to be a psychologist and that I would not be deterred from caring for my community through this avenue. My father instilled in me 
that education is the great equalizer. My singular focus was to start and finish college. This was no small feat as it eluded my family, not to be deterred by anything that was put in front of me. Resilience and perseverance needed to be my superpowers. I started at Cal State Northridge. Woohoo to all the Cal State folks. <laughs> all right. <laughs> And my resilience and perseverance was tested. In my second year of college, my father was diagnosed with a primary brain tumor. This leads me to my next lesson. Communicate to your patients and meet them where they are. After surgery and daily radiation treatments that I took him to, he persevered. He continued to work his two jobs. But the question I had after his surgery and his treatments was what did this diagnosis mean for him? No physician communicated that to me and to my family in these exact words. They said, we got most of the tumor out. Radiation treatments work well for this type of cancer. My family asked me, what does this mean? And I needed to know more. So I took a trip from Cal State Northridge to UCLA, and I ventured into the UCLA Medical Library. With me, I carried a piece of paper with the path diagnosis and the grade of tumor, as I ventured into the medical library at UCLA, the first medical library I ever entered, I went to the computers and I looked up anything I could find on the pathology and the grade of tumor. I searched the stacks um, for the journals with the treatment and the long-term outcomes. With a pile of journals in my hand, I headed to the copy machine. This may be dating myself, but I think some of the folks on the stage behind me may be familiar with this process of obtaining medical journals. <laughs> While at the copy machine, I noticed a person dressed in scrubs and wearing a white coat. They rushed into the library, quickly searched for an article, and just as quick quickly left the library with the article in hand. I knew that person was a doctor. They had a white coat. I had assumed they urgently were caring for someone and needed the necessary literature from the library to make that treatment decision. And with that literature in hand, they went back to the hospital to execute that plan. When you wear your white coat, never underestimate the symbol that white coat has on your patients, the next generation of students, and your community. Seeing the doctor in the medical library in that moment, I was reminded of my dream, and in that moment, how impossible it seemed for me to reach that dream. I left the UCLA Medical Library with the answer to my question and knew that my time with my father was limited. My next lesson is to listen to your mentors. They believe in you. After my undergraduate degree, I continued at Cal State Northridge. I pursued my master's in psychology, and it's when I reached a fork in the road. I was encouraged by my colleague, my peer mentor, you all will be your peer mentors to each other, to pursue my dream of medicine. Sometimes you need someone else to believe in you and remind you of your strengths that you never acknowledged. Thinking back to that moment in the library at UCLA and how much I wanted to be that doctor in the white coat, I deferred my PhD program acceptance in social psychology and started my pursuit of applying to medical school and becoming a physician. While interviewing for medical school, my father had a recurrence of his brain tumor, and I spent the last six months before I went to medical school caring for him. My father knew that I was considering several medical school options, one of them being UCLA, but I was leaning toward leaving Los Angeles, having spent my entire life here and wanting to venture to the East Coast. He explained to me that the best medical school in the world was UCLA. About six weeks before I started medical school, I had one of my last conversations with my father. He told me he was proud of me and he wanted me to finish what I started. We both knew what that meant. A few weeks later, he passed, I left Los Angeles at the age of 27 to start medical school across the country. This takes me to my next lesson. Your lived experiences will help you when you don't expect them to. My experiences in the new place were eye-opening, my confidence grew. Not only did I survive in this prestigious institution, but I thrived and made lifelong friends. But I was worried that I was not good enough. I had not attended the private K through 12 schools or colleges nor attended summer camps, all the things that many of my classmates did and I thought they were necessary to thrive in this challenging academic medical school. What I minimized and I underestimated was my lived experience. 
I had minimized the experiences were just as important and helped me thrive not just in medical school, but residency. Growing up with my dad, he always worked two jobs. One of those jobs was delivering newspapers seven days a week. Starting in the wee hours of the morning, he would deliver them across Los Angeles. And from the age of nine, I would help my dad on weekends, summer, and when it rained. I would get up at 2 a.m. to help him deliver the LA Times across LA. How I complained. <laughs> but he promised me a hot cocoa and a sugar donut when we were done. <laughs> I had no idea how much this would prepare me for a career as a physician. <laughs> Having done two residencies um, in OBGYN and anesthesia, the residency, um, it's a hierarchy of medicine. It's, I had no idea, um, but this prepared me. I had no idea I was gonna be that well prepared. Residencies like running a marathon, physically, emotionally and intellectually. During my time in residency, we worked 36 hour days. Don't worry, it's better now. <laughs> I would think back to my many call nights at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. I could be delivering newspapers right now, but instead when I was woken up at 2 a.m. with an urgent page, I'm taking care of a patient and they call me doctor. Plus I can still get the hot cocoa and sugar donut post call. This brings me to my penultimate lesson. Stand up and speak out. As physicians, we've often taken a passive voice, avoided political issues, avoided taking a stand on controversial issues. We have historically held positions of privilege in society. Physicians are leaders of the community, and as such, we have additional responsibilities to advocate, advise, and promote the principles of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. I recently attended a meeting in DC, and prior I stopped into the Smithsonian Museum of American History. In that museum, there's an exhibit of the actual Greensboro lunch counter, where in February 1st, 1960, four black college students sat down at the Woolworths counter in Greensboro, North Carolina. If you recall, this was a time in our history where we had overt segregation. These four black college students walked into the Woolworths and politely asked for service, and they were asked to leave, as they said this was a white-only counter. They politely refused and remained in their seats. It ignited a youth-led movement to challenge inequality and more. This exhibit reminded me of the power many of us have, and as physicians, we have the power to call out inequities and disparities. We cannot be silent or passively wait for another group to make change. To make changes in the system, you have to show resilience and perseverance. It also helps to have a seat at the table and be in a room where it happens. We need the diverse voices to be heard. Medicine is the intersection of humanities and science. We as community leaders and you as future leaders have work to do as health disparities continue to impact people from historically marginalized groups. Patient autonomy over their bodies and reproductive choice have been stripped away in half of the states in this country, and it will continue. In addition to the effects of the global pandemic, we are experiencing an epidemic of gun violence, climate change, and a tide of disinformation. As you don your white coat, you carry with you the obligation and responsibilities as physicians to not stay silent on these issues. And my last lesson. Never forget the impact your actions have on your family and your communities. I think back to my white coat ceremony. It was a culmination of a dream my father had that I shared. At my medical school graduation, it was a pivotal moment for our family. My dad's brother, Uncle Cruz, is in the audience right there. Woo <laughs> He toured the medical school and he went into one of the empty lecture halls. And he stood on the stage and he said in one generation, we went from picking fruit in the fields to graduating from medical school. <laughs> Symbols are important in our journey. In 1997, I left LA for medical school I took with me my dad's medic bag, and I've kept it with me to this day.
It's a symbol of what it means to be a healer, to care empathetically for another person when you need them the most and when they, when they need you the most. Your white coat is not just a symbol of healing, but represents the power and privilege you hold to affect change. As I look out at the class of 2026, I see a class that resembles the communities we serve. I see me in you, and I hope you see me in you, because we also need more faculty and academic leaders to resemble the communities that we serve. You all bring strengths that are not taught in organic chemistry, they're not taught in physics, they are intangible strengths that will propel you to achieve your goals. Reach high and be true to your vision and mission. The challenges you will face in medical school residency and beyond will not deter you, but simply strengthen you as you have built the armor of resilience and perseverance. It is your inner strength and the strength of us all together as a community that will push you towards justice for our communities, equity for our communities, and now you will be fighting for your families and your communities from the inside of these academic walls of medicine. Use this privilege to hold others accountable, make integrity the center, speak truth to power, and don't let people be performative. Disrupt, be the change makers. In UCLA's Royce Hall, we present you with your white coat, the symbol of entry into the medical profession. And I know my father is looking down upon us and is happy that I'm here with you, knowing that we are it the best medical school in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lucero. I, to say that that was inspiring is uh, uh, shorting it. So please, one more round of applause for that fantastic video. <laughs> also gives me a moment to gather myself here. <clears throat> the white coat has played a significant role in medicine as early as the 17th century. When physicians began wearing white coats, surgeons wore short ones. The white coat really represented three major developments in medicine. First, the acceptance of the germ theory, the idea that infections were caused by germs, a novel idea in the 17th century. The advent of hospitals, where medicine began to concentrate in hospitals, and the growing importance of the scientific foundations of medicine. Photos from the end of the 19th century show surgeons and physicians garbed, and nurses as well, in white coats. By the turn of the 20th century, physicians, who are now being viewed as scientists, began wearing long white coats signifying the power of science and protection. The white coat further symbolizes society's fundamental confidence in the knowledge and skills of physicians. The white coat also symbolizes the deep importance and sanctity of the patient-physician relationship, a relationship in which perfect strangers confide their innermost secrets, fears, and concerns. The white coat connotes great privilege as Dr. Lucero said, and with that comes greater responsibility. We must always remember that the knowledge that provides us with the ability to cure must be accompanied by compassion, humanism, and caring. I now call upon Dr. Lee Miller, Associate Dean of Student Affairs, and Dr. Jason Napolitano, Associate Dean for Curricular Affairs, who will introduce each of our matriculating students. No, you're not graduates yet, but just wait for it. <laughs> each of our matriculating students and the institution from which they receive their most recent degree. I also will welcome Dr. Natasha Wheaton, who you'll hear more about later, who will welcome each student to the stage. The students will be cloaked with their white coat by, by the assistant dean leading the society to which they are assigned as part of our advising program designed to help students from matriculation all the way to graduation. Our society names are Latin words that portray a sense of healing and community. The first letter of each of these four names spells out UCLA. Come on down. <laughs> UCLA 
You guys ready? <laughs> All right. Well, um, Assistant Dean Daphne uh, Kalmas, please come forward to cloak the students in the Utila Society, uh, which means useful or helpful. Dr. Ilji Fitzgerald, advisor and dean for the Utila Society, is unable to be here today, and we really appreciate Dr. Kalmas stepping in to cloak the Utila students. Osasowen, Virginia, I'm Yuwu, University of California, Irvine, and PhD in Genetics and Development from Columbia University. Zara Amiri, University of California, Irvine. Lisa Bang, University of California, Los Angeles. Tristan Paul Bennett, the University of Texas at Austin. Christopher Carvalho, Arizona State University. Deborah Chang, University of California, Los Angeles. Andy Chung, University of Wisconsin-Madison. Clara Cousins, Harvard University. Lilia Diaz, University of California, Los Angeles. Ahmad A. Alhaja, University of California, Los Angeles. Sarah Fadich, Northwest University and a Master of Clinical Health Sciences from the University of Washington School of Medicine. Raven Grant, Yale University. Ali Jafar Haidar, University of California, Los Angeles. <laughs> Kitiana Hempstead, University of California, Los Angeles. Omar Ibrahim, University of Pennsylvania, <laughs> Master of Science, University of Pennsylvania.
Alina Imran, Wesleyan University. Iyasu S. Kabeda, Stanford University. <laughs> Kathleen Kilrow, University of Massachusetts Amherst. Stephanie Kamora, Villanova University and Doctor of Pharmacy from Thomas Jefferson University. Cassidy D. Lee, University of California, San Diego. Nicole Legaspi, San Francisco State University. Adi Lerner, University of California, Los Angeles. Niti Mehta, University of Pennsylvania and Master of Science in Education from Johns Hopkins University. Trey Morales, University of California, Los Angeles. Kristen Murray, University of Pennsylvania. Van Viet Thuy Nguyen, University of California, Berkeley. Ricardo Oregon Guzman, University of Utah, and Master of Arts in Urban Education from Loyola Marymount University. Anais Mariam Panosian, University of California, Irvine. Emmanuel Poranakian, University of California, Los Angeles. <laughs> Melanie Ramirez, Tufts University. Camille Rich, Georgetown University and Master of Science in Global Health from Trinity College, Dublin. Adon Rodriguez, California State University, Northridge.
Antonia Santos, University of Illinois, Chicago, and Master of Science in Biology from Roosevelt University. Anna Shelley, New York University, Master of Public Health and Master of Social Work, Virginia Commonwealth University. Joshua Smith, University of Nevada, Reno. Colin D. Teague, Arizona State University, PhD in Neuroscience, Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Ryan T.U., University of California, Berkeley. Randy G. Sai, University of California, San Diego, Master of Science in Biological Sciences, University of California, San Diego. Sana N. Vora, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and PhD in Epidemiology from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Angelina Wei, University of California, Los Angeles. Christian Yanez, University of California, Los Angeles. <laughs> Haley Yu, University of California, Berkeley. Felicia Zhang, University of California, Los Angeles. Will Assistant Dean Chandra Smart, Professor of Dermatopathology, please come forward to cloak the students whom she will be advising in the Caritas Society, which means charity or affection. Hayoung An, Harvard University. Margo A. Mara, University of Connecticut. Rita Azmahi, University of California, Davis. David Bartolome, University of Pennsylvania. Yeritsen I. Carminati, Johns Hopkins University. Amani uh, Carson, Duke University. <laughs> Milan Carter, University of Southern California. Uh, 
Abubakar Sharif, Dartmouth College. Audrey Chung, University of California, San Diego. Christopher Dan, University of Chicago. Vanessa De Aro, University of California, San Diego. Jack Donovan, University of Notre Dame and Master of Science in Aerospace Engineering from the University of Colorado. Melissa Eging, Brigham Young University. Nora A. Galustian, University of California, Berkeley. DeAndre Guyton, University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Kate Hampelos, Oberlin College and Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine from National University of Natural Medicine. Emily Hansen, California Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo, Master of Science in Biological Sciences, California Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo. Christina M. Excuse me, Christina M. Northwestern University. Cole Joachim, Whittier College. Karen Kikota, Santa Clara University. <laughs> Olina Kleshkova, Kharkiv National University, PhD in Behavioral and Cognitive Neuroscience, the City University of New York. Manuel Labib, University of Akron. <laughs> Joden Ledress, California State University, East Bay.
Evelyn Y. Lee, Wellesley College and Master of Science in Biomedical Sciences from Tufts University School of Medicine. Maria G. Luna, Brown University. Julissa M. Molina Vega, McAllister College. Luke Murphy, Boston College. Lynn Nguyen, Grinnell College. <laughs> Leslie Nunez, University of California, Berkeley. Dupree or California State University, Northridge. <laughs> Ani Arujian, University of California, Irvine. Jane Fan, University of California, Berkeley. Alejandro Quinones Baltazar, University of California, Riverside. Abhinaya Ramakrishnan, Vanderbilt University. <laughs> Thomas Roach, Brown University, Master of Arts in Ethics, King's College, London. Tasneem Sadak, University of California, Los Angeles. Astrid Safo, Rice University. Kavian Shariati, Cornell University, and Master of Engineering, Cornell University. Vidhi Singh, University of Washington. Melissa Navegas, University of California, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. 
Maxwell Wang, University of Michigan. Matthew J. Yan, Boston College. <laughs> Noah Yan, Johns Hopkins University. Victoria Yuan, Stanford University. All right, I would like to call upon Assistant Dean Deborah Lehman, Professor of Pediatrics, to cloak the students whom she will be advising in the Levamentum Society, which means relief and comfort. Nadir Noor Adara, Wellesley College. Armin Bargi, Harvard College, and Master of Science in Education from the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Santi Badurai Klein, University of California, Berkeley. Kavo Bolavaram, Georgia Institute of Technology. Jacqueline Cabral, Tufts University. Osvaldo Camargo, University of California, Riverside. Lisa Cha, University of California, Berkeley. <laughs> Cheng Cheng, Knox College and PhD in Developmental Regenerative and Stem Cell Biology from Washington University in St. Louis. Al Hassan Jadat Dejani, University of California, Los Angeles. Marilee Fisher, Washington University in St. Louis. Katrine Golzar, University of California, Irvine. <laughs> Faustino Gonzalez Barrales, University of California, Berkeley. Mackenzie Hammonds, California Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo. <laughs> K 
Christopher James Hernandez, University of California, Los Angeles. Julie Hooper, Bowdoin College, Master of Public Health, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Thomas Issa, University of California, Los Angeles. Eka Olisa D. Jose, Washington University in St. Louis. Shinny Kim, University of California, Berkeley. Vanessa Kirshner, Wake Forest University. <laughs> Hannah Lee Brown University. Dan Luca, University of California, Berkeley. Michelle M. Lum, University of California, Los Angeles. Drew Mack, University of California, Berkeley. <laughs> Natalie Martinez, University of California, Los Angeles. Zina Mestari, University of Michigan, Dearborn. Shannon M. Nesbitt, University of California, Santa Barbara. Tiffany Wynn, University of California, San Diego, Master of Science in Biology, University of California, San Diego. Omarachukwu Onya, Stanford University, and Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Stanford University. Stacy Piva, Occidental College. <laughs> Kasra Ramati, University of Utah. Yasaman Salaman, the George Washington University, Master of Public Health, the George Washington University. <laughs> 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 
Charles Santa Maria, University of Massachusetts, Boston. Ben Schneider, Johns Hopkins University. Antoinette Simmons, San Diego State University, and Master of Science in Biomedical Sciences from Charles R. Drew University. Ahana Singh, University of California, Berkeley, Master of Science in Global Health, Georgetown University. Monica Soto Novaron, University of California, Los Angeles. Kaitavia Stafford Carricker, University of California, Los Angeles. Manish Surya Palam, Temple University. Serenay Tran, University of California, Irvine. Alejandro A. Vega, San Diego State University and Master of Public Health, UC Berkeley. Cecilia Wada, Yale University. Sonia Wang, Harvard University. Finally, I call upon Assistant Dean Holly Middlecoff, Professor of Medicine and Physiology, to come forward to cloak the student she will be advising in the Achendo Society, which means illuminate. <laughs> Dona A. Siriani, University of California, Los Angeles. Ola Doni Alomaja, University of Pennsylvania. Bismarck Kojo Amor, Elkhorn State University. Miles Anderson, University of Texas, San Antonio. Wesley R. Armstrong, University of California, Los Angeles. Joanna Bedoy, University of California, Davis. <laughs> Kristen, 
Gladys Bayo, University of California, Los Angeles. Anthony Betancourt, University of San Francisco. Sophie Blanc, University of California, Berkeley. Grace Boyd, University of California, Los Angeles. Gustavo Castellanos, University of California, Davis. Casey Chun, Fordham University and Master of Public Health, Columbia University. Joanna Curry, Princeton University. <laughs> Miriam Farouk, State University of New York at Old Westbury and Master of Science in Education from the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Giovanni Mark S. Gamalong, Northwestern University. Nancy Garabai, University of California, Davis. Haley Rain Gonzalez, University of California, Santa Cruz. Christopher Gonzalez, University of California, Los Angeles. Green Sierra Ha'am, University of California, Berkeley. Gilda Hernandez Garcia, University of California, Davis. Mikhail Howard, Chamberlain University. <laughs> Nicole Johnson, Wake Forest University. David C. Kim, Princeton University. <laughs> Min Jung Kim, Johns Hopkins University and Master of Science in Biomedical Engineering, Johns Hopkins University.
Kelsey Larios, Mount St. Mary's University. Kath Lee Latran, University of California, Davis. Adrian Lin, Yale University. Taylor King Liu, University of Maryland. Yomara Stephanie Mendez, University of California, Riverside. Beza Mengistu, University of California, Los Angeles. Connor J. Morris, Brigham Young University. <laughs> Corinne Negveski, Arizona State University. Eugene O, oh, Johns Hopkins University, Master of Science in Engineering, Johns Hopkins University. Sarah Park, Brown University. David Suarez Pinto, University of California, San Diego. Alejandra Rivas Duras, University of California, Berkeley. Illich Alejandro Rodriguez Rivas, University of California, Santa Barbara. Arushi Saharan, University of California, Santa Cruz. Sebastian Salazar, Johns Hopkins University, Master of Science in Engineering, Johns Hopkins University. Caitlin Sebastian, Boston University. Fred Deju San, University of Minnesota, PhD in Biomedical Engineering, Zhejiang University. Matthew Thomas, University of California, Los Angeles.
Lisette Y. Torres, University of California, Davis. And Jennifer Vu, Stanford University. Always super exciting. I've been through many of these, and every year I've just, I, in fact, for a brief departure from the program, please stand up and turn around and face your friends and family and loved ones for just a moment. Now. I'm, I'm taking out my pen, I'm taking out my pen. I'm adding this to the program for next year. All right, I'm gonna ask you guys to sit down so we can go ahead. I am adding that to the program for next year. That was really so special. Now it's my great privilege to introduce doc, Dr. Natasha Wheaton. Associate Clinical Professor of Emergency Medicine and Faculty, faculty Director for Base Camp, also an educator for excellence. The Base Camp is a program that is what they've been doing for the past several weeks to start medical school. It's a fantastic program under Dr. Wheaton's leadership. The Base Camp is a metaphor for acclimation and preparation. So imagine, I don't know if anybody here has climbed mountains, I have not but the idea of getting ready for the ascent. And now they are ready to take on the rest of medical school thanks to Dr. Wheaton. Dr. Wheaton, will you lead the class of 2026 in the recitation of the UCLA Medical Oath? Right. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Braddock. Will the class of 2026 please rise and join me in reciting the oath that's reproduced in the program. You guys ready? All right. Today, I begin my journey to become a physician, a noble profession dedicated to the preservation of life and prevention of human suffering. From this day forward, I will be different, recognized as a healer. I pledge myself to value human life. I do not enter this pathway alone. Society provides schools and faculty. Teachers and peers assist in my education. Important individuals assist me. Among those attributes that are respected in physicians, I will treasure compassion, empathy, and honesty. I will learn to preserve life by promoting health and by treating individuals who are ill. I will remember always that within each human life is a person who can feel pain as well as comfort and happiness. 
I will treat my patient not only as an individual, but also as a member of a family and society. I will respect the dignity of everyone I help and will hold private and in confidence all the patients report to me. I will be honest with my patients and their families, with teachers and peers, and will never tolerate deception or fraud. I will be honest with myself to know my strengths and abilities, to recognize my limitations, and to seek help when necessary. I will believe in myself, for it is that foundation that allows me to believe in others, from mentors and peers to patients, their families, and friends. I will always strive to do my best and work continually to improve my knowledge, abilities, and understanding. I will be a teacher to those who follow me and to my patients and my community. My relationship with patients and colleagues will not be affected by race, religion, nationality, financial or social status, or sexual orientation. In being true to this oath, I will preserve the finest traditions of medicine and science and enjoy and conduct my life, my profession, and my art to the fullest. Students, please be seated. The humanism in medicine pins on the lapels of your white coats are a gift from the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, initiators of the first white coat ceremony in 1993. The gold Mobius loop on the pin symbolizes the continuous bond of trust, respect, and communication that connects healthcare professionals with their patients when humanism is at the core of medical practice. We hope that this pin will serve as a reminder of your oath to keep healthcare human. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Wheaton. Well, this concludes the formal part of today's festivities. We'd like to invite all of you in a moment, don't go yet, uh, to join us outside for a celebration in honor of the students in the class of 2026. We'll ask that uh, family and friends remain seated so the deans can walk out with the students in exiting the auditorium. There'll be a brief period where we'll be taking some photos on the steps of uh, Powell Library. I don't know what the weather is right now, but we believe it's going to hold. Um, but I will invite you, if it, if it does start to rain, uh, to uh, you can come up under the portico, or also we're going to keep the lobby to Royce Hall open in case, in case of rain. But again, one final time, congratulations to the class of 2026.